After much debate, I named this project Magical Women. And I cannot think of a better fit and guest star who truly depicts that magical woman title. Gay Blackstone's career is unprecedented. She is one of the most powerful figures in magic today as executive producer for both the Masters of Illusion television series, currently in its 22nd season on the CW network, and the internationally touring Masters of Illusions live performances. She has provided more exposure, work and opportunities to magic and magicians than anyone ever. She's literally cast hundreds of magicians in her broadcast television and live shows. It's a who's who of magic and Gay Blackstone's experience and creative vision brings a treasure trove of knowledge consistently getting the job done efficiently, precisely, and successfully. Those are the facts. Now, as if that's not enough, Gay is the chairman of the Board of Trustees at the Magic Castle and the Academy of Magical Arts. From her first Look Magazine cover at age two to acting and dancing distinctions as a child entertainer, to being cast as one of the infamous gold diggers in Dean Martin's televised variety show. Gay was a shining star destined to soar to great heights. What started as a brief magic contract developed into a love legacy with the legendary Harry Blackstone Jr. They were partners in life and in magic. Gay is credited as co-producer of the Blackstone Magic Show, which toured extensively and holds the distinction of being the longest running magic show in Broadway history. You name it, and most likely, Gay has accomplished it and done it very well. She's an expert in every facet of show business and brings a lifetime of experience and well-earned successes. Gay is here today to share some of her secrets challenges and triumphs. It is with great pleasure and great anticipation I welcome the magical Gay Blackstone. That's phenomenal. I'm not sure I can live up to all that, but it's... <laughs> but those are facts, Gay. That's what you've done. It's, it's, been, it's been a journey. It's been an adventure. Uh, it's not over. How does a performer that's a stage performer adapt their performance for television and, and how, what should they be aware of? What suggestions would you give them? How do you adapt? Well, I think part of it depends on what your character is. Are you the character or are you a character? Mm -hmm. If you are a character, then stop and think what are the important points that that character has to get over to an audience so they understand who the character is and what they're doing. Right. If you as the performer star are the character, then make sure no matter what you're doing has as much likability as possible. Mm -hmm. If an audience likes you, they will follow with you. Yeah. If they don't like you, if they feel you are arrogant, mm -hmm. if they feel you are uh, putting them down, if they, if they feel that you are not relating to them, then you already are behind. And also you have to remember on television that in this day and age, television is no longer seven and nine minutes sets. I need you to come to that three and a half, four minute sweet spot right. to, to make it work. And they'll say, oh, oh no, no, this really carries at nine minutes. It carries at nine minutes on stage, yes. but it doesn't carry at nine minutes on television. And they'll say, well, you just edit it. I don't want to edit it. If I have to make your magic, then I probably won't bother. Yeah. Because that's not what I'm being hired to do. Right. If you want to hire me to create your magic, then that's one thing. Mm -hmm. But when I'm shooting television and we shoot the entire series in four days, there is not time for me to break down everyone's magic and teach them how to work on television and 
my video village is on stage. Right. Not, not typical at all. Can, my can video you explain village, that to the view, viewers what, what a vi video vi village okay. is and, and, okay. and why it's different than most shows? Okay. My, well, first of all, we shoot with 11 cameras. Now, that's different in general because most shows shoot with three cameras, sometimes four. But we shoot with 11 cameras and they're all recording constantly yeah. because a magician they are not actors playing the part of a magician. They are performers. And when you're a performer, you respond to your audience. So if they're doing a trick and someone in the audience over here responds, then that's where they're going to go to sell right. your next right. segment. Right. So if you do it a second time and that person doesn't respond, but someone over here responds, you go that way. Right. So therefore, I cannot do two recordings and match shots, take the best from this and the best from this, because they won't match. Because it's not an actor who every time is going to their specific mark, who's then looking, turning back, which is what an act, an actor will do the same thing 15 times and you will be hard pressed to see any difference in the 15 times. Right. Magicians are performers. They respond immediately. And because we always have anything from a small audience to a large audience mm -hmm. for them to perform to, it, because it, it lets them relate. Did you subscribe to our Magical Woman channel? Come on, you can do it. Subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you'll be aware of future Magical Women talks. The first time they do it the way their, their muscles are used to doing it. So it's always the best. So because we have so many cameras, then I'm able to do the same thing if you were doing multiple takes, but it's just from the one take. Right. And so normally, whoever's watching all the cameras is in a control room, they're in the truck, they're far away from the performers. That's correct. And this was David McKenzie's early idea, and so right. Three cameras are stationary. Two are at the back, and then uh, one is an overhead from, from the back. So you you're have a high view, and then a stage right, stage left view. Right. Those are just fixed. No one's with them. They're just permanent. Yeah. The other eight cameras are all with camera guys moving them, taking directions. So I'm watching all eight of those. And I'm on headset and I'm talking to the director. Being right there on stage, I can talk to the stage manager. I can talk to the magicians as they go in and out or beforehand. I have all these other cameras so I can cover different angles and different things. And something that's not visible in person on camera is totally visible. Yeah. So and let HD me. Ca cameras now. We're not talking cameras even from five, 10 years ago. These HD cameras are crystal clear. Yes, and let's just say they do not do favors for magic. No. <laughs> um, you know, magic was at its best when we had soft footlights yeah. across the front of the theater. Mm -hmm. That was when it was at its best. The heyday of magic, and that was part of it because so much of it was softened and, and muted. H HD cameras are crystal clear. You see everything whether you want it to or not. Right. That includes lines, wrinkles, smudge lipstick. I mean, there's, <laughs> there's not anything it doesn't include. Right. So I am there to help you. I am there to make your act the best it can be without redoing your act. Right. But, but to change anything that's needed for television, to soften it, to make it work, to, you know. Um, right, do, there are tricks. You just need to be tricks. prepared to do we tricks for the tricks. <laughs> Yes, we do not do camera tricks. However, and I will say this, if the audience doesn't see something that then I realize we see on camera, right. I will clean that up. Because right. to me, that's not a camera trick. Because nobody in that audience saw it. Right. And, and I know that it can be done that way. It's just from the difference of the medium that we're working in. Yes. Maybe the lights have to be brighter for television. That's or correct. maybe something like this, so yeah. that we are affecting your magic. I will clean it up because the last thing I want is someone at home going through things frame by frame by frame 
and something being exposed because that's not good for the magician, nor is it good for the show. Right. And, and it's something that you'd never have seen if you were there watching. So, I mean, those are the sort of things. Those I don't consider camera tricks because it's real magic. It's just, just, just a little cleanup at that point. It's quality yeah. control. And it I, is, I think I that's, think that's a great way of putting it, quality control. I, I think, Gay, also, um, you just mentioned that you're using 11 cameras, but actually that's cost effective because by using 11 cameras, that means that you don't have to do so many takes because with all of these various angles, you're able to select an angle that may be more conducive to the magic and you don't have to go back and reblock time after time. And that's remarkable. That's experience speaking. That's 22 and seasons of <laughs> the Masters of Illusion. Yes. And it's, it's very rare that we ever redo anything. It's, we only redo it primarily if they didn't hold a card long enough for the, for the audience or for the camera to get a close up on it. I mean, so we'll just retake that or something just right. so that we're clarifying the magic and making the magic stronger. Right. Or we have, we have a problem with the camera. You know, unfortunately sure. cameras go down. There are yeah. things that happen uh, or or that we want to do something, we've shot it normally, and we've suddenly realized that with a steady cam, we can do a whole different feeling that, you know, because they didn't think, they never thought about the fact when I said, I'd really like to shoot at 360, and the magician goes, oh no, it won't. Yes, it will, because with a steady cam and my 11 other shots, right. you better believe I can do it with and do so that you get that movement and the movement will always give you energy. It will give you flow. It will give you an intensity that you automatically have in person, but that you don't have on television unless you create it. It's very interesting because when you have that 360 degree experience, it makes the magic so much stronger because from the audience's perspective, they've seen front and back. I realize that there are times you can just be a little more creative. Absolutely. Um, Think out of the box a little bit. And, and you've most certainly done that with the whole series and all the experience that you've encountered and the learning curves, um, you know, season after season after season. You know, nobody has 22 seasons of, of magic show experience. Here's a quick clip from Franz Harari about Gay Blackstone. When you, when you do a television show, after a while you come to realize that your director, your producer is a, he's a, he or she is a, is a television person. That's what they do. And they see you as a product to be captured and produced. In the case of Gay, she understands television, but she also understands you and she understands your product because she's done it herself for 30 years. So in a way, it's a lot easier because you don't need to explain. She knows why you're doing what you're doing and where you want to end up. Coming soon, we will be featuring friends in an in-depth talk about gay. 22 seasons of Masters of Illusion right. and then five, five specials of uh, World Magic Awards. Right. Uh, you know, and it's... It's been a learning experience in all different directions, not just in the magic, but in the way you handle your sponsors, the, the way you handle your celebrities, um, you know, all, all these different things that you learn and how you make everyone your friends because the more they're your friends, the more they're going to enjoy watching the show and performing on the show. Now, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Come on, you can do it. We need subscribers to obtain more privileges with YouTube. So please, please hit that notifications bell. Spread the word and comment. We love to hear from you.